Hello and welcome to another Wine Word Italy review. It's been a few months, I've been in Saudi Arabia, but uh, fortunately my return to Italy coincided with the arrival of uh, these wines. So, today I am delighted to be tasting three wines from Cantina Bastianelli, which is in Monte San Pietrangeli in the Marche region. Uh, let's have a quick look on the map, see where we are. Here is uh, Civitanova Marche, up here is Ancona, come inland a bit to the south and uh, it's in this zone here. Now then, their website can be found at www.cantinabastianelli.it and uh, these wines were sent to me by Francesco who is actually the grandson of the winery's founders and as their printed literature proudly proclaims we produce wines today in the same way they were made in the past. And this sense of tradition combined with careful use of modern technology is at the heart of their philosophy. Every bottle tells you a little about us, says the labelling. Well this is possible because Bastianelli aims at high quality whilst keeping production quantity low. They currently produce four wines, um, three of them here, Re David, okay, which is uh, a Merlot, uh, Rusticus, which is a Sangiovese, Copio, which is uh, Montepulciano, and Veronica, which is 100% Passerina, uh, their only white wine. I'll just be tasting these three reds mm -hmm. today. So, without any further ado, let's get on to bottle number one. So, this is Re David. It's a Merlot Marquet IGT. In this case, it is 2011. 100% Merlot. The vineyards for this wine are located on south facing slopes on a clay sandy soil. Manual harvesting is carried out in the second half of September. Fermentation for 15 days with extended maceration on the skins to get the maximum colour to the wine. Refining is taking place in stainless steel vats and uh, then in bottles for at least six months. So let's get this open and see what goodies lie within. Okay, young wine, so oh, it's not particularly soft. Oh, I say, another interesting scent there. So, get some in here. Let's see what we've got. I do miss doing this. Not something I can really get into in Saudi Arabia, obviously. Alcohol not being permitted. Um, let's have a look at the colour there. It's a, a sort of ruby, almost purplish red around the edges there. A lovely fruity young colour. I've got a lovely little scent there as I open the bottle, so uh, there it is. Not too dense, quite a light wine, but uh, it is only 2011. It's not just been sitting in there in last a long time. So let's get the nose in and see what it's all about. Oh, well, it's a lovely big, big hit of ripe red fruits there. Blackberries. Oh, goodness me, uh, raspberries almost. There's quite sort of a little sharpness to it. Red currants. My mouth is watering in anticipation. All right, let's not hang about. Chin chin, let's get the taste going. And that is very fruity indeed. No sharpness about it whatsoever. And the nearest thing I can think of there is it's a black currant, black currant cordial almost. It, the fruit is so intense, it's lovely. I don't know what the alcohol is in there, but it's certainly not overpowered by alcohol. 
thirteen percent. I'd have to say you would never know. Um, I could quite happily sit and uh, imbibe this, drink it uh, in good company. But what would I drink it with? That's the important thing, really, isn't it? Um, well, something like grilled meat or braised meat, even in a nice rich gravy. Or if you uh, don't eat meat, if you're vegetarian, um, maybe something like a wild, mixed wild mushroom risotto would uh, would come up a treat for that. I think nice mushrooms cooked till they're nice and dark and soft, and we could really put those together. Well, that's a very very fruity offering there. The uh, almost black currant tea suggestion in the taste. Lovely, there it is. Wine number one. Okay, Ray David, a Merlot IGT Marquet, 2011. A splendid start. Okay, second up today then is uh, Rusticus, Rusticus, to give it an English pronunciation. This one is a Sangiovese Marquet IGT again 2011 okay there's the branding on the front very smart design they're simple but smart the thing that attracts you to uh, to pick it off a shelf in the first place have a little look okay it's 100% Sangiovese these again are grown on a south facing aspect and uh, on the clay sandy soils uh, as the Merlot. Okay, it's manually harvested in the same period, the second half of September, and the press grapes are fermented in stainless steel for 15 days or so on the skins, refined into stainless steel once again for several and uh, then again for several months in the bottle. So let's pop it open and see what's inside, shall we? Ooh, a different ball game altogether. A different colour. I mean, look at the bottom of the cork there. I don't know if you can see that to catch some light on there. It's uh, a dark and deeper colour. Let's see. In the glass. Oh, wow. Tempted to go on pouring there. Let's have a look at the colour. If you can see that. Light coming through there enough for you. It's quite a gloomy day, unfortunately. We've had some lovely autumn weather the first week I was home and the second week it's gone back to what you would expect at this time of year rather cold, rather gloomy and with a bit of wetness too ok, so we've got a nice deep ruby red um, splendid with the light behind it, I don't know if you can get that because obviously the light is behind the camera oh, it's a warm smell, we've got dark fruit ripe plums, my goodness and a nice kind of sort of sharp, it's got a tannic warmth though which is surprising but it's not um, not wood refined at all or aged, it's got a lovely warmth about it but instantly I should say where possible these wines are about as biological as is possible to be um, the, uh, the makers, Bastianelli, are really going for, for the biological option. Um, there is some sulphite added to the, the wine as a preservative, but uh, it's kept to an absolute minimum. Um, and the process otherwise is a biological one. So, oh my word, I'll get some taste going. Chin chin, here we go. This is the uh, Rusticus. Okay, Sangiovese. Let's give it a go. Oh, got some interesting things going on in there. Almost an balsamic taste. Um, yeah, it's altogether a more earthy sensation.
thing much more complex than the, the, the flavour of the, uh, the Merlot there. That's warmer and therefore suggests it might go with something a little more complex to eat. Um, cooked meat, cured meat, or uh, any meat dish really. I mean, uh, if we're going to jump across the, British, the, the Europe and across the English Channel, I'd be inclined to have that with a, a nice steak and kidney pie. Would be simply superb. Or again, those who prefer not to eat meat, um, a medium mature cheese. Get the cheese board out, some uh, some pecorino, not not uh, not fresh, not mature, mature, but somewhere in the middle would be very good. Yes, very interesting. Once again, let's check the alcohol. It's uh, very similar, thirteen percent. So again, not to be taken too lightly, and. Uh, together a very interesting and more, more, more challenging taste. It's uh, uh, warmer, makes you think a little bit. Now let's blend in wine. There we are. Wine number two, Cantina Mastianelli, Sangiovese, IGT Marquet, 2011. There it is, the Rusticus. We're getting that. Let's go on. And so, to bottle number three. This one is the Copiot, which is a Marquet IGT Rosso. Once again, 2011. And this one is uh, made from Montepulciano grapes. The growing conditions for the vineyard are the same as for the other two wines, a south facing uh, clay, sandy soil. Harvesting is, however, carried out much later, um, from the second half of October, so uh, the grapes get a little longer on the vine. Fermentation is done in stainless steel on the skins. Refinement, again, in stainless steel and in bottles for at least six months. So let's pop the bottle open and see what delights lie within. Okay, here we go. My goodness. Oh, I saw. If the scent of the cork is anything to go by, we're in for a rather a good treat here. Send the bottle into the glass. Look at that. Look. There, let's have a little look at the colour. Okay, a bit of light coming through that if we can. I've got it very nicely here. I hope you have too. And to focus, it's a lovely dark ruby red. There you go, it doesn't even change too much towards the edges. It's a full colour right through there. That's what happens if you maturate on the skin, you're getting a lot more colour into your wine. Okay, so there's the colour. Ruby red. Let's get the nose in. See what this one tells us. Oh, that's altogether more botanic. Oh, yes. Um, almost a little fruity. Much more warmth and depth to that. What am I getting there? Getting real end of season fruit there. Ooh, overripe dark fruits. Very intense smell. A little more, the alcohol is a little more noticeable in this. It's coming through above the, the sense of the wine. Not unpleasantly so that one, I mean it's, uh, according to the bottle it's actually lighter, we're down to 12.5% on, uh, on the alcohol, so let's get a taste going, see what it's about, chin chin. Oh, lovely. Um, would you have um, balsamic? That's what I would say to that. Nice and 
warm through the taste. Coming to the end there. Lovely, lovely, persistent balsamic finish to it. That's wonderful. Again, that would be very, very easy to drink. The sharpness. So yes, a bit sharper. Have it for something a bit stronger. Let's go for it. Roast meats. Nice lovely beef joint, thinly sliced, serve it up with some winter vegetables, why not, this is the season. Get them in. Or if meat's not in your diet, no problem, something along the lines of uh, maybe grilled aubergine or um, pumpkin stuffed with mushrooms uh, and garlic would be, uh, would be marvellous because there's enough flavour here to, to balance out the, uh, the intensity of, of garlic. Even, I'm just looking down at uh, Saxon there, he's having a lovely sleep on the floor. He's no bother at all. Mm. So, there we are. Wine number three. It's the Copio Marche IGT Rosso. There it is. From Egidio and Francesco Bastianelli. Down there in the market. I have really enjoyed tasting these wines, especially as I said, I've been out of the, uh, the country for a while, and unfortunately, as from tomorrow, I'll be back in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. But uh, the best things come to those who wait. Chin chin until I see you for another Wine Word Italy review.